We have seen three or four uh, new appointments to uh, Biden's cabinet. Marty Walsh, uh, Merrick Garland, um, uh, today Bill Burns, um, and um, and maybe uh, and 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 maybe we we have time to sort of assess these later. But what, one of the things that I think really um, was uh, a big announcement was uh, Joe Biden last week saying, "I'm not going to allow the politics of austerity or deficit reduction to inhibit our plans." It sounds like they're going to go really big. Talk about this. This gets into why unsanitized you're going to be switching to the first 100 days uh, newsletter. And that is because much of what Biden's got to do is either going to be to directly deal with COVID or to deal with the implications of COVID or in some ways to use those two things as a mechanism in which to do sort of like to go big on a lot of projects that Democrats want. Yeah, uh, uh, you know, I think that was pretty heartening for a lot of people to see that he was not giving in to sort of deficit hysteria or 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 tempering himself in any way, and actually using economic arguments to say that that what I'm told is that spending now will be a hell of a lot better than allowing a, an elongated uh, 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 lack of demand or, or an elongated slow recovery and then having to pay later. So. Um, you know, that was really good to see. Um, as you said, I mean, prior to Georgia, there was almost no talk of the usual kind of things that you hear during a transition, which is what is the president going to prioritize? What what is he going to go with health care first and then immigration or, or you know, those kinds of of, of complicated, you know, those kinds of, of decision making, which we saw in the Obama era, which we saw in the Bush era and, and, and so forth. None of that was was part of the discussion around Biden, because everyone knew that he had a four alarm fire the moment he came in with the pandemic. And it was going to be that was going to be the all hands on deck moment. And, and it will be for the first hundred days. It will be the determinative of whether that that time is a success. And so I, I felt there was no need to sort of uh, dance around that and realize that, that the, uh, the, 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 the beginning of this presidency and the pandemic are kind of one and the same. And so we're just gonna shift, I mean, it's really just a shift of, 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 of a headline, right? It's just a shift of branding, really, uh, that, that we're gonna do uh, uh, you know, this thing on the first hundred. I mean, you know, maybe, maybe if by April 29th, which is day 100, uh, a, a good job is being seen. I can, I can get out from under doing a daily uh, thing every day. But, um, you know, uh, uh, prior to that, we're just going to follow uh, uh, how this administration is handling the overwhelming issue before us. Now, you know, I mean, obviously, there are going to be other issues, too. I mean, uh, and, and, and the Capitol riot shows you know, a perfect one that is that is going to be, uh, you know, leading this agenda moving forward. It, it's as heartening as it was to hear Biden talk about deficit spending. It was just as disheartening to hear him talk about the need for a new domestic terrorism law. So, you know, there, there's there's going to be, uh, uh, you know, because of what happened, there's there's that's going to be another ball in the air that that you know, it just broadens my ability to cover that. Okay. And so let's talk about um, what Biden will do in that first hundred days a little more specifically. Now, uh, there's there's going to be a a more cohesive vaccination policy. I imagine that there's going to be some form of either Defense Production Act uh, invocation or something similar to get more vaccines out there. I think we're going to see more federalization of that. How... um, and and we're going to obviously see $2000 checks how is this going to happen like what you 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 talked a little bit in in a piece that you've written the, the past day or so about the potential of one sort of like tranche of this uh of this legislation to be to be brought to the Senate by normal means and another by reconciliation. You write that there's three opportunities for reconciliation over the next two years because it's limited to one each fiscal year and reconciliation has not been used for the fiscal year that is ending. So you could 
You could have three major bills where you only need 51 votes, essentially, including the, the, the vice president. This gets a little Byzantine, and, uh, but, but with that said, everything else you need uh, is not filibuster proof. What, so, so walk us through what you think right now it's going to look like. So, yeah, as you say, it's fiscal year 2021, 22, and 23. Uh, 2021 is what we're in right now. You can, there's been no buzz, budget resolution, so you can do reconciliation there. Uh, fiscal year 22 starts in September, so you could see one in the fall. And then the following year, you could also see one in the fall. So that's the three silver bullets. And they really are silver bullets because it's, it's uh, you know, from a legislative standpoint, these are the main ways that you can get things done without needing to court 10 Republicans. So, uh, you know, the question is, where does uh, this, what, what Biden has talked about has been a multi-trillion dollar package that he wants to put together, where does this fit into that? And, you know, I think that checks has the ability to go probably on its own if he wanted to, uh, and it, it could get 60 votes in the Senate. Uh, it's an extremely popular policy. It apparently had 60 votes at the end of the last Congress. It, it likely has it now with a more Democratic Congress. Um, so, uh, you know, you could probably get that done. And I, I'd be interested to hear your, uh, your thoughts on this, because it, it's, it's almost a trust building exercise. I mean, Democrats ran on this in Georgia. They vowed to do this. There's a lot of elements of the left that doesn't trust the uh, Democratic Party to follow through on promises like this. And it might make sense to just say, you know what, we're just doing the checks. We said we would, and here's what we're going to put on the floor and we're going to do it. And if Republicans want to, uh, you know, deny a, a, an 80-20 policy in the country, let them. You could always pass it through reconciliation afterward. Or Joe. Uh, or Joe Manchin, who who tried to inartfully get attention on Friday, the markets began to crash by saying that he was going to block these checks, which I mean, it would be suicide for the party, which for the first time in years decided to make a clear case for itself and said, we're doing these $2,000 checks. But on the flip side, like you're saying, David, if you make it a clean bill, get guys like Hawley to call their bluff. Other Republicans who who in their district need this kind of vote. Yeah. And Manchin, who walked that back a little bit, said, oh, I just meant it needs to be targeted, which, of course. Oh, I'm sorry, did you mean $2,000 checks? Oh, OK, no. That's a, yeah. Oh, those checks, yeah. Um, but the other, the other idea here is that you use checks, which is very popular, to sort of, you know, smuggle in some things underneath it. Yes. And uh, it, like state and local spending, which really needs to be done because we have serious shortfalls in the country, like more money for vaccines, which is probably the most important economic imperative right now, which, uh, you know, the more, the faster that we get the vaccines out to the country, the quicker you can reopen the country, which is incalculable economically. So, uh, you know, there's an argument to be made there as soon as you get something that's that's hot button like state and local spending in there, you're probably going to have to go through reconciliation uh, because Republicans are just not going to give you votes on that. Um, so a big package like Biden's talking about sounds like it would go through reconciliation and that might take longer. Right. And, and then for days, you're going to hear uh, Democrats promise these checks and they're not giving us these checks. And, and it's it's a way to sap that public trust. So, you know, you really have to weigh that. Like it's the, the, the importance of a Democratic Party that did not, in, in the eyes of the public, deliver after 2008 uh, in a way that was appreciable for the ordinary person, uh, that, that suffered the consequences at the polls. Uh, you know, uh, you have to start thinking about, okay, what can we do quickly and simply and prove to our base that we're serious about tangible improvements for the American people? I, I get the sense, we only have a couple minutes left, Bear, but I get the sense that this administration, I'm starting to get the sense, this administration has, in general, learned some lessons from its participation in the, the Obama administration. 
and and it, and it and it comes in different forms, right? Like, I mean, this by by choosing Merrick Garland, not necessarily my favorite choice for uh, for uh, Attorney General. I think what they're really doing is setting up on that uh, uh, first circuit of appeals in D- the D.C. Circuit Court an opportunity to put someone in there who's going to be younger and who's going to be who's going to be like more aggressive in protecting things because this is the second most powerful court in the country. And, and and this is going to be a very important court when it comes to maintaining the ability of agencies to, to function properly. I mean, we're on the cusp of a new uh, a Lochner era. And this idea of like, we need to deliver and deliver fast and not be so concerned about, about, you know, uh, uh, roadblocks that we perceive to be there. There is a sense that they have learned from that. And I, I don't know. I, I am with you on the idea of there's no reason not to bring up the checks as a standalone bill, sneak a couple of things that maybe not hot button, but are like warm button issues <laughs> to make it very difficult for a Republican to vote against this bill. Uh, at- you put 2000 checks and vaccine money together. Like that's a hard bill for Republicans to, to reject. I mean, what is in there for Republicans to reject? Right. It's, it's right. either we don't want, we don't want people to have more money, uh, which is not a popular position, or we don't want people to get vaccinated. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I would try to keep it pretty simple, so stuff yeah. like that. 